Today I am officially an author! Cheers! Hello there humans, I am Dulce Silruno. I am officially an author now because I have a short story published, it's called Leitarlios, or in English, Guiding Light. It's a short romance about a blind ri uh, blind writer. No, that's me. Sorry, a blind musician. You see how horrible I am at marketing myself. Anyway, this kind of kind of like aligns with what I want to talk about today, because today I want to talk about why do I write. I mean, yeah, I'm partially blind. It's a struggle harder than a lot of people have it. Why is it that a person like me, who doesn't even want to show the face, who doesn't even want to market as a brand, as a person, as a... Well, I'm, I'm trying with my own quirks, but I, I am awful at it. I don't even know what I'm doing. And then I wanted to talk about, like, why do I write? I cannot tell people in general, why do you write? Because that's, first of all, that sounds kind of obnoxious. Like... It, why should I ask other people, hey, why do you bother to do this? I mean, it's such a hard job. It's very much a thing that you have to love. It's not very well paid for the majority of the writers out there. It's not, uh, I mean, it's extremely hard. It's not an easy path. It's not that everyone is going to become a Miss Stephen King or like a, like a, I don't know. Stephen King or who else is like big or this George R. R. Martin or Susan Collins I mean she did she, she went big with the Hunger Games and all that it's not that I am doing this because I want to become one of them because my reasons to become a writer are far from all the materialistic aspect of writing uh, Either way, I am not the kind of person to tell anyone out there what's your reason, like why are you doing this or whatever. I can only ask this to myself. So, this is not a tea video. I am not going to attack anyone who wants to make a quick buck with some fiction or whatever. It's not about that. Damn, this is too hot to drink still. Anyway, why is it a, that a person like me wants to write? Well, there are some discussions out there that, about representation and why it matters, and I am one of the first to jump on that wagon and say, yes, representation matters. But I am also one of those who is like, am I really going to wait for other people to do it for me? I don't think so. That's not happening. So, what about doing it myself? And I'm not talking about self-inserts, although I'm not going to accuse anyone who is like, okay, I'm going to do a self-insert because, hey, let's be honest, a self-insert is a story about oneself. There's nothing wrong with that, unless the story isn't good. That's the real problem with a self-insert. So when, a, when someone is doing a self-insert with grace, I will applaud that. That's very clever. But yeah, I'm not talking about that kind of thing. When I talk about representation, I want to represent disabled characters. And if you have been following my YouTube channel for a while, then you know that I am all for blind characters. It's part of my supposedly called brand. And I also want to include other types of disabilities in my writing. And then again, this is not that I'm going to write a whole story revolving around disabled people only. Because that's unrealistic. I want to include everybody, and that means fully able, disabled, mentally ill, physically ill, I don't know, queer or straight or whatever you want to call it, and all kinds of color all kinds of colors of skins and Whatever. I, uh, the cool thing about being blind is that I don't judge by someone's skin. 
or clothing or makeup or lack thereof because I cannot even notice. So representation to me is about including everybody and I mean it everybody I'm not gonna be able to put everybody in a major role but I want to have even minor characters or like some some important character to some degree with some quirk I want it to be as diverse as I can and if I cannot pull that off then I'm doing something wrong so it's not an agenda because one thing is to be considerate and include people who are different because this is the reality that I live in. I see so many people from all walks of life and I want to, um, how to say that? I want to portray it in my work. Another thing is having a political agenda and like pushing it down the throat of other people because you have the power to do that. And that's a hot topic for maybe another day, but I'm not the kind of person who wants to talk about that in my YouTube channel. You probably know what I'm talking about, and here's the tea. I'm not going to spill. I'm going to drink it. (laughs) What I'm looking for is accuracy. If a character is blind with specifications like, okay, this person has light perception, but this person cannot see contrast, like colors or it's only light perception then I have to be as accurate as I can better readers feedback research all that together right this is just the beginning I'm, I hope this is not a too long video but I want to talk about all the things that I'm doing and why am I doing them because I know it's really weird for most of you like why is this person writing science fiction of all things as a blind writer well I'm not gonna predict the future and that's for sure but I want to be as accurate representing people that could live in the future as I can or in all genres this is the other thing I would like to represent people with different kinds of situations this is why I jumped in the challenge of writing a a romance short Maybe I still don't have the capability of writing a whole romance novel because I really, guys, I I am not the most romantic in town. I don't know the genre that well and I am still learning about it, so maybe I cannot pull off a novel. But I wanted to give something to the romance genre because I feel that people with disabilities deserve romance, love or whatever. And... I wanted to try that. I'm not going to wait for other people to do it for me. And so I did it. And yes, my punctuation is a mess. A special thanks to a fellow writer and the person who did all this possible. Well, actually two of them, Terry McGill and Diane Drake. Thank you so much for putting together this whole project of disability and romance. And thank you very much for dealing with my probably awful punctuation and typos and errors. Uh, It's not that I'm not ashamed, but I am aware that it's difficult for other people to like go through it and correct all the things that I still don't know properly about punctuation. So thank you very much for your help. Otherwise, my story wouldn't be there. Thank you to one of my friends, writer friends, and also a beta reader, Maggie. You are the one who always helped me polishing this, especially that romance one. Actually, Maggie was the one who challenged me to write a romance. Finally, I said it. So thank you. Yeah, as I was saying, as I as usual, I go on a tangent. Um, I was saying, I want to give characters with disabilities all kinds of stories. Because when people talk about representation, usually it's the story or of a person with disabilities overcoming the so- such disability, which is so overdone and like, okay, for that we can make YouTube videos and talk about it. Actually, there's a whole blind community on YouTube. Shout out to all of you guys. They have amazing videos. They are doing what I don't want to do with my channel. Although I think because of 
transparency i'm going to go into that in a for in another video coming up soon someday it's coming um but yeah i think it could go two ways the, the disabled character overcoming a disability or the disabled character who has a disability but it's this kind of superhero character therefore the disability is not a problem <clears throat> they're devil anyone yeah, this is why that character doesn't really convince me. Because, yeah, it's blind. It's a blind character, but it's a superhero and blindness is not a problem because he has our heightened senses and that's a myth that I really dislike. So instead of waiting for someone else who has no idea how to write a blind character, then I'm gonna do it myself. And I'm going to give all kinds of possibilities. Like I said, I wanted to write a horror with a blind narrator. I wrote a crime where a blind character has a major role could be the detective, could be the killer, could be someone helping the detective, I'm not gonna say but it's a crime story and there's a blind character in it I'm writing a sci-fi where there's a person with disabilities in a major role and it's not so much about overcoming disabilities in that arc, it's more about like overcoming life and all the struggles of the future but not like not because of the disability but like how the future is going to develop and this person is going to have even more struggles than my current struggles in the current present moment so yeah it's sci-fi you see but i'm giving it a twist and so on i want to write situations that a lot of people are not writing about and there are other personal reasons that I'm writing for. But I think the reason why I stay as a shadow is because I want to keep some degree of privacy. So there are these very personal reasons very close to my heart that maybe I am safer not disclosing on a video that's going to be available for the world to listen to. So, yes. My purposes as a writer are beyond the making money or fame or, I don't know, branding or networking. Although I like networking and since I discovered the AuthorTube community like for real and I truly jumped into it, I feel like there is a sense of community that I am liking a lot. But I'm not writing because of this either, so then my personal reasons. I guess this also ties in with disabilities. I want to talk about mental struggles in a way that I don't see very often or I don't hear very often in like book reviews for example because I don't have the eyesight to read physical books and not all of them are in audiobooks so if it's not in audiobook I have very little chance to enjoy a book I want to talk about mental disabilities deeply it's not like sorry for let's bring the tea sorry for bringing up this example but yeah it I have to sorry miss Rowling but in her famous series, very acclaimed and respectable, with all the credit it deserves, we have this hero who loses people very close to his heart and after a book or two, or after a chapter or two, everything's fine. Seriously. No. No. That's not fine. It's not okay to just portray it like okay it was a very sad scene and this character who was like the only family left i'm talking about harry oh this character dies and poor harry now really has no family anymore except for the abusers over there but like no magical family anymore and after a few chapters everything's fine no Honey, it's not fine. When you have mental struggles, depression, family loss or grief, like intense grief, or in some cases like chronic depression or suicidal tendencies, that's not in Harry Potter, I'm just talking in general. 
The person doesn't just overcome it because there's a war looming ahead. No, 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 no. I want to write something different. It's not one of my favorite things to see in books or movies. When there's mental trauma, severe mental trauma, there are consequences. And no, not just the psychopath serial killer that you see in horror books. I'm a little bit tired of that too. In the sense that this is the only portrayal of mental illness that it's prolonged. Like, it's antagonistic. It's guiding a character toward its doom. I mean, what about normal people? who also suffer from struggles and mental challenges of all kind. Do they really overcome it next week? I don't think so. And I want to portray that in books as well. I mean, writing is my coping mechanism. I have anxiety and depression and a little bit of other kinds of problems here and there, but I'm going to keep it to myself. So writing is a way for me to cope with all of that. I would like to find a character that I can connect with. And if you know of, please tell me in the comments if there is a character that... The book is not about overcoming the mental illnesses, but like the character has to deal with these kind of setbacks while at the same time dealing with the main plot, whatever it is. Like, is there something like that out there? Because I haven't found it yet uh, that's done well or like that, that kind of touches me. So please, please recommend me something. I'm always looking for recommendations, by the way. Please enlighten me. Remember, I am visually impaired. There are so many things that I miss. This is why I don't want to bring tea. Because, hey, I might be missing something. But anyway, I would like to write more about that because I want to have a more accurate portraying of struggles, real struggles, even if it's in a fantastical setting. I have rambled enough, I think. And it, writing is very personal. Yeah, this is something I was talking about with someone I care very much for. So we can learn Technicalities of punctuation, grammar, structure, plotting, how to create chapters, scene structures, subplots, genres. We can learn all that we want. But no one is going to teach you like how to write because writing is such a personal thing. Writing is a form of expressing yourself. This is tying back to what I said about self-inserts. If people want to insert themselves in a story as a way of coping, if it's done well, then, like if it's done in a what do I mean with done well? If it's appealing to other people, if it's clever, if it's a good story to share, then fantastic. I second that. But what I mean is writing is personal. Whoever tells you that they don't put a little bit of themselves in their writing, just a little bit, they might be lying. Maybe. So, we cannot really teach a person how to write. And we cannot really judge if something is good or bad. We can say, well, I didn't like that. Well, it's not for me. Like, for example, what I, when I said this thing about portraying grief in one or two chapters and that said everything's fine. That's something that, I, to me, it's really not very tasteful, but that's my opinion. Who am I to criticize such an acclaimed series? It's all, it's all subjective, so... I don't know if I am a good writer. I only know that I want to share some stories that I consider could be good, could be interesting. And as I haven't seen or heard from another author doing something similar, I want to try, even if it's the triple the, the struggle compared to 
a fully sighted writer. So, because I am not a person who can ask you what, why do you write? Then tell me in the comments, what is your real reason for writing? Is it just money? Nothing, no judging. Is it just money or is it that you want to share a certain type of stories? Is it because you care about representation? Is it because you want to share something with your grandchildren when you're long gone? Or is it for legacy, for example? Is it for documenting something from your culture? What is it? Why do you write? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for putting up with me and my rambles. I never script my videos. So this is what you get and I'm so sorry. Anyway, hope you still have enjoyed it and stick around for more content. Subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like and share if you like, all that stuff. I, I am, I'm not a good marketer. I'm so sorry. I'm lacking in that department. But thank you very much and see you next time. Bye.